I ask that you make test corrections if your score was under, what did I say, 85, right? So um, I wanted you to have those today. So if you have them, I will, I will take them now. Yeah. You don't mind. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you, thank you. Thank you. Everyone doing okay? Kind of zoned out over there? We're starting Chapter 7. If you were not here last time, um, what I did was I offered, well, I ended class early. We talked about grades, and if you have any concerns about your grades, you'll just need to get with me after class. Um, I've been thinking about how we're going to do the whole replacement of your lowest test thing. And the plan is this. We're going to take Exam 4 the way it's scheduled on our calendar. The fourth exam will cover Chapter 7, all right? But I will also offer a makeup exam that will kind of bump up your grade for one of your other exams. Um, but that, I don't think I'm going to take any class time for it. So it'll be something that you have to schedule with me and set up a time that you go to the testing center or something like that, take the test then. Uh, I just don't know if we're going to have enough time in class to do it. So. I'll give you more information about that maybe end of next week. We only have three weeks left, right? This week, next week, and the following week. And then finals. So I already collected test corrections, so if you have those, okay. Thank you. You're what? <laughs> oh, uh, I, sorry, not rational functions, wrong class. Rational expressions. All right, so the first section is called simplifying. rational expressions. Simplifying rational expressions. All right, so what I'm going to do to try and motivate this is give you a problem that you're familiar with. We'll talk about it, and then we're going to move on to you know how we're going to implement th those same ideas today. So let's take a, let's take a fraction. Because a uh, ratio, right, rational, comes from the word ratio, ratio meaning fraction. We're going to be looking at fractional expressions. That's what this is about. And the first section is how do we simplify a rational expression. So let's, let's do something we've seen before. Let's take mm, 40 divided by... Sorry, just trying to think of something that would be somewhat interesting. I won't make it too interesting. 40 divided by 45. All right, this is a rational expression. It's just the ratio of two numbers, right? And if I were asking you to simplify, because that's what this section is about, right? Simplify. If I say simplify that fraction then you would reduce it, right? You would try and figure out, is there a number that goes into both of those, right? And you'd, you'd simplify it. Well, you would probably be able to do that in your head, maybe. But I want you to look at the way we do it if it wasn't done mentally. What we do is we take the 40. We try and break 40 down. Uh, 40 is, what, what two things can you think of that multiply to be 40? 8 and 5. You could have done 10 and 4, right? I mean, there's different ways. 
Then you could have said the bottom is, let's see, 45. Can you think of something that multiplies to be 45? 9 and 5. And if we do this, we can see that because there's multiplication, and I'm, I'm stressing here with the blue the dots there, that's multiplication. Because it's multiplication, the fives here could cancel, right? The five over five really becomes a one, and so it's, it's like it's not there, right? So then we could say, all right, well, we have eight over nine. Now, does that simplify any further? Well, is there something that goes into both of those? You could try, let's see, eight is two times two times two, isn't it? And nine is three times three. Do we have anything that's common on the top and the bottom there? No, so nothing cancels, right? So we pretty much we're done when we get to the eight over nine. Agree? That's simplifying on a that's what simplifying a rational expression is. However, ours are going to be more complicated than just forty over forty five. Um, <clears throat> be careful though. What if I gave you a different problem and I said, what's eight? plus 5 over 9 plus 5. Can you simplify this? So I'm trying to get you to compare that to this up here that I just circled in yellow. That was 8 times 5 over 9 times 5. There we canceled the 5s, right? When I have 8 plus 5 over 9 plus 5, can I cancel the 5s? No. Cannot do that. Think about it. What is 8 plus 5? Let's say I didn't cancel that. What's 8 plus 5? 13. 13 divided by 9 plus 5? 14. The answer to this is 13 over 14. If you cancel the 5s, then you're going to think the answer is what? 8 over 9, which it's not. So you cannot cancel things when there's addition or subtraction between them. You can only cancel when there is multiplication. All right, let's just make sure we're clear on that. I told my other class that um, uh, we that that's kind of a big no-no to cancel like that, and we all agreed in that class that if someone cancels like that, I get to get that yardstick that's in here. I get to smack them on the hands with it. So that sound like a good idea. We're gonna try something different these last three weeks. A little corporal punishment. <laughs> yeah. All right. So just remember multiplication. You can cancel, addition, subtraction, cannot cancel, right? All right, so how are things going to be different today? Well, let's look at something like this. Negative 24 x squared y cubed z over um, 56, no, 42 x y to the fourth z. Now, is this a rational expression? Did y'all did y'all notice my new pointer? Did anyone notice my new pointer? Instead of my laser? Y'all like that? You don't understand what it took to make that happen. It's, it's a lot of work. Well, it wasn't a lot of work, but it took a lot of research to figure out that that's what I needed to do. Um, so. We have a rational expression, right? Rational fraction. What is the operation between everything on top? Multiplication, right? This means multiplication here, multiplication here, multiplication here. On the bottom, 42 times x, times y to the 4, times z. So we have multiplication. So we can cancel if things can cancel, right? We're allowed to. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of split things up here. It's like the 24 over 42 times the x squared over x times the y cubed over y to the fourth times the z over z. I'm just doing it like that so you can see how we're going to kind of collect the things that, that are similar to each other. My numbers together, my x's together, my y's together, my z's together. Let's work on the number first. 24 divided by 42. So let's do this the traditional way. Can you think of a number that goes into both of those? Six, is that the largest we can think of? Well, maybe let's, let's just try it. Let's, let's say six. How many times does six go into a negative 24? Negative 
4. How many times does 6 go into 42? 7 times. So that's negative 4 over 7. And that's completely reduced. There's nothing that goes into either one of those. Do you agree? Okay. Now, what about x squared over x? You cancel an x out. Now, if you want, you can try and go back to the properties of exponents. When you have x is squared over x, it's really x, x to the squared. x squared over x to the 1, right, that's what it really means. You're supposed to subtract the exponents, 2 minus 1. What's 2 minus 1? 1, so you get x to the 1, so you get x, right? So this one in the middle becomes an x. And this is still multiplication. What about y cubed over y to the fourth? y cubed over y to the fourth is y to the 3 minus 4, which is y to the negative 1, isn't it? Because 3 minus 4 is negative 1. What does y to the negative 1 mean? 1 over, so back, again, back to properties of exponents. Anything to a negative power is the same as 1 over that to the positive power. Now, if you've forgotten these exponent rules, you know your cheat sheet that has the factoring guidelines? It has all those properties on it also. So you can go look at those properties. So this, this one will be 1 over y. And then the last one, what's z divided by z? It cancels, so it's just a 1, isn't it? I don't need to write it, but I'll put it there just so everyone sees. And now what I'd like to do is put everything back together, all right, into one big fraction. My only kind of concern here is where does, where does this x belong on the top? Because that x is really like an x over 1. So I have a negative 4 on top. I have an x on top. What's still on the bottom? 7 and then a y. Box it up, and you're done. So we have simplified that rational expression. I mean, it is better looking than the original, isn't it? Questions? No, no, I put it here just so every, if anyone goes back, and goes back and looks at this, they're like, what the hell happened to the z over z? Well, it turns into a 1, and then you don't really need it. So if you didn't have to write it. Okay, now let's see something a little different. 5x minus 20 over 2x squared minus 32. Hmm. What do you think? Can anything just cancel here? Can I just start canceling some stuff out here? This is for your hands. That'll hurt pretty good. It's like the, the paddle that I grew up with. That's what you got? Paint? Nah. Um, what do you think? Can we do the same thing we just did? Take this, figure out what that is. Take this, figure out what that is. What's your, what's your feeling here? No, why not? Because there's subtraction between them. You can only do that when there's multiplication. So we are not allowed to start canceling and messing with that. Do you all see the difference between that and the previous problem? Yes? Okay. But there is still a way to try, at least try to simplify this. So let's focus all of our attention up on, on top first. If I look at those two terms, right, and I ask you to factor them, Factoring turns addition and subtraction into multiplication, right? That's what factoring is all about. So can I turn the top into something times something? Well, first step of factoring is GCF, right? Do you have a GCF up top? Five, pull the five out. You're left with X minus four. Agreed? 
Okay, now I have multiplication up top, don't I? I have five times this whole thing, so I need it in parentheses. Okay, on the bottom, oh, can I do anything else to factor that? X minus four? No. What about the bottom? What can I do there? Can I pull a GCF there? Two? And then what's left? X squared minus 16, right? Can I do anything else with that? Exactly. It is a difference of squares, isn't it? X squared minus 16. So let me go one step further. I have 5 times X minus 4, and I have over here 2 times difference of squares turns into what? X plus, not, not 8, careful, 4 X minus 4. This right here, difference of squares formula becomes this. Do you all see that? Remember, last class what I said is, in order to progress in this course for the, for the last three weeks, we have to be comfortable with factoring. If factoring is still a problem, it's going to be an issue. And then that just leads on to the next math courses also. So, uh, but do you at least see that it could turn into that? Yes? Okay, now that I've got it split up, I want to put some stuff in here. I have multiplication I'm drawn here. I have a multiplication right there. I have a multiplication right here. I have a multiplication right there, right? So anything with multiplication separating things, anywhere we have multiplication, we can cancel things if they are the same. Do we have anything that's the same? The x minus 4, the entire thing, right? That parentheses and that parentheses are the same, and I can cancel them. Is that the only thing that cancels? Yeah, I don't have anything else that's exactly the same. So what I'm left with is a 5 on top, right? On the bottom, a 2, and then I have in parentheses x plus 4. And there's nothing else I can do to that, so I box it up. You see it? Just, just so you can see that this is true, okay, what, what we've done is we've said that this up here is really this, right? That's what we've said. We've simplified it. Let's just check it real quick. What I'd like to do is I'd like to just plug zero in for x. So let's, let's go up to this top one right here. Let's plug in zero for x right here. What happens if I get zero right here? I get zero and then minus 20. So I get negative 20. What about zero here? Fills that off, and I get negative 32. So if I plug zero into the top one, I get negative 20 divided by negative 32. What number goes into both of those? Two does, but also a four, right? Four goes into 25 times, four goes into 32 eight times, and a negative divided by a negative is positive, isn't it? So I get five eighths. Now plug zero into the bottom one, okay? Plug zero into this one. What do you get? Five over two times, what's zero plus four? Four, what's two times four? Eight, and you get five over eight. You get the same result, but it's simplified. It's a little cleaner. It's easier to work with, right? Okay, I just want to try and convince you that they are the same thing. Even though they look different, they are the same. All right, questions? Next one. Three X squared plus eleven X minus four over 3x squared plus 16x plus 
Okay, we are, we are being instructed here to simplify this rational expression. Here? Here? Did you say yes? Okay. You can't do it, right? Why not? Because we have addition and subtraction between these terms, right? You can only do it when we have multiplication. Y'all got that? Who's gonna, I, someone's going to do that. I know someone's going to do that on test. No? No volunteers? No takers? Good. So since we can't cancel things and we need to get things multiplied, that means we're going to have to bring factoring in, right? Now, in the previous problem, the only thing we had was a GCF, right? And then one of them was a difference of squares. These, however, don't have GCFs, do they? The top and bottom separately, they don't have GCFs. But they, all, they both have three terms, right? Which means, how do we factor three terms? AC method. So you have two separate AC method problems here. Do you see that? Again, that illustrates the point that you must be able to factor, or else this will be impossible, pretty much. Here we go. Let's take that one. I do this thing. What are my numbers? Negative 12 and 11. Okay, so what numbers will do that for me? Negative 1 and 12. And then what we did is we rewrote it. And then in the middle, I'd put what? Negative 1x plus 12x. Then I split it and I do my grouping, right? What comes out of the first two terms? Just x, right? We're left with 3x minus 1. I need to match that over here, 3x minus 1. So what do I factor? What do I need to put in front of this to create that? Positive 4. So it becomes a 3x minus 1 times x plus 4. Now notice, everything I've done, I've done on the side over here, right? This is like my scratch work. This isn't part of my answer. I mean, it will be, but this is all done on the side. And now I'm going to do the other part of this, which is the denominator. And I have to do a little cross for that and then do the whole thing again, right? So let's do that one. I'll put that one right here. What are my numbers? 15 and 16? What numbers give me 15 and 16? 1 and 15. So I take 3x squared, I put the plus 5 on the end. In the middle, plus 1x plus 15x. Split it. GCF out of the first one is x. I'm left with 3x plus 1. I need to match that, 3x plus 1. So what number goes out in front? Positive 5. That gives me 3x plus 1 times x plus 5. Is that right? So, rewriting this. I'm going to bring this down now. What does the numerator factor to be? 3x minus 1 and x plus 4. What does the denominator factor to be? 3x plus 1, x plus 5. Now, because I have multiplication between the parentheses, right, I can cancel things if they are the same. Are these the same? Well, x plus 4 is not the same as x plus 5, right? Is 3x minus 1 the same as 3x plus 1? No. So what does that mean? We're done. It is simplified. There was no simplification that could happen. Now, had that been 3x minus 1 and 3x minus 1, then we could have canceled, right? So we would just box this.
I'd like to point something out right now that's going to come up in the next problem, but I want to address it right now. This 3x minus 1 that we had over that 3x plus 1, right? I'm just focusing on those two right there. I want you to notice they're almost the same, right? I mean, that's obvious. I have 3x. It's a positive 3, right? Positive 3x. Here I have a positive 3x. The only problem is that this is a minus 1 and this is a plus 1. Agreed? Okay. Keep that in mind that these are the same and these are not the same, right? We cannot do anything to something like that. Can't, can't make it happen. Compare that to the next problem that I'm going to give you. How about... Nine x squared minus one over two minus six x. We can't just start canceling things, right? Because we have, what, subtraction between those terms? So we, our best bet here is to try and start factoring things. Anybody see the numerator, what can, do, what can happen? It's a difference of squares, right? So the numerator becomes 3x minus 1 and 3x plus 1. Or you could have done it the other way, right? 3x plus 1 and 3x minus 1, either way. Okay, so that's difference of squares. Great. What about the bottom? GCF. Good. What's the GCF here? Two. What's left? One minus three X, right? Okay, so yes, yeah, things are starting to look pretty weird here because I would love for this on the bottom to cancel with one of these, right? So let's, let's look at the one on the right first, okay? Because this one is very similar to the one we had in the previous problem. This one, the ones are the same, right? Positive one and positive one. But the threes don't have the same sign. One is negative, one's positive. Comparing that to the previous problem, right? The threes were the same, the ones were off, right? And there's nothing we can do. But look at the one on the left. The 3x, right, the 3 is positive here. Here the 3 is what? Negative. So they're off by a sign, right? 1 is positive, 1 is negative. And then what about the 1s? This is negative and this one is positive. So neither one are the same, but they're both off by a sign, aren't they? They're both off by a sign. And whenever you have that happen, whenever they're both off by a sign, then you can do what I'm about to do, which is a little trick, okay? It's not a trick. It's just algebra, but we kind of call it a trick. Uh, let, me, let me do the one on top. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work with this top one right here. Just tell me if this is wrong or not. What did I do? What did I do to this right here? Yeah, but I, I switched the signs, but I didn't just do it. I didn't just switch them. I actually factored out a negative 1, didn't I? I pulled a negative 1 out. Because if I multiply this negative 1 back through this, right, what would I get? The first multiplication, negative 1 times negative 3x would give me 3x. And then negative 1 times positive 1 gives me negative 1, right? So I just pulled a negative out of that first one. But doesn't pulling a negative change the signs on, on everything that's in there? So I changed the signs. And since I changed the signs, and we had already said the only difference between these two were the signs, then they should match, right? I have what, a negative 3x here, and I've got a negative 3x here. I've got a positive 1, I've got a positive 1. So those are exactly the same, aren't they? Do you all see that? 
It's a little tricky, but it's what we do. I factored it out. I just pulled it out. It's it's always sitting there next to it, right? Um, look at this. If I had if I wrote negative x plus three, could you factor a negative out of this? Could you could you say okay that's negative one and that's x minus three? Do you see that if I distribute this negative through, I get back this? So I pulled a negative out of that, didn't I? Yes. Okay. So what if I just flip this around? In other words, instead of writing it like that, what if I had written it like this, 3 minus x? Can you still pull a negative out of that? Sure. I could pull a negative 1 and make it what? Negative 3 plus x? This and this are the exact same thing. Right? Negative 3 plus x. No matter what you ever have, you can always factor a negative 1 out. So just take a step back because you need to understand what uh, your goal is here. When we looked at this, these were very close, right? These two right here were off by a sign. What I mean by that, the threes were off by a sign. One was positive, one was negative. The ones were off by a sign. One was negative, one was positive. Why wasn't this one off by a sign, these two? Well, the threes were off by a sign, weren't they? But the ones aren't. The ones are exactly the same. So they don't differ. What you need is for both to be off by a sign. Y'all follow me or not? Okay, it's going to take a little getting used to. All right, let's look at this now. If this factoring of the negative 1 is, is good, then do you see that these two will cancel? Yes? It has to stay there. It has to stay in our answer. The negative 1 is going to stay outside. So I have negative 1 sitting out here. I still have a 3x plus 1, and I, on the bottom, what do I still have? A 2. Now, you could box your answer like that. You could also distribute that negative 1 back through, like that. Any of these are okay, as far as answers. This is, a, this is a really important example because it illustrates how we can use that negative 1 factored out to make things cancel out. Let me give you another one. What about 2x squared minus 7x plus 1 over... Um, negative 1 plus 7x minus 2x squared. Can we just start canceling things? No, because I don't have multiplication. You see three terms on the top, three terms on the bottom? So you try AC method, maybe? Good luck with that. It's not going to happen. They're both going to be prime. Does anyone see something here? What do you see? Okay. If you take a negative one out of the bottom, then they all change signs, don't they? And it becomes a positive one. On the bottom, it becomes a negative 7x. On the bottom, it becomes a positive 2x squared on the bottom, right? And doesn't that match exactly what's on top? Yes. So what you have to see in this problem, and I'm not quite sure how to teach how to see that, but you, you have to identify that the, the numerator and denominator are off by a sign. The ones, I have positive one, I have negative one, right? I have negative 7x, I have positive 7x. I have positive 2x squared, I have negative 2x squared. Every one of those is off by a sign. So my, my choice here of trying to attack this is to factor a negative 1 out. Now, you said factor it out of the bottom. You can do bottom or top. I'll do bottom because you said bottom. So I'm going to leave the 2x squared minus 7x plus 1 alone on top. 
over, and then on the bottom you say factor negative one out, and what would be left would be everything that was down there change the sign. Now this and this cancel. Now they're the same. Why do they cancel? Because I thought I said, wait, you can't start canceling stuff if there's addition and subtraction between them. You don't know what I'm asking? Like, why can you now do that? Because this right here is like it's in parentheses. And on the bottom, don't you have something times something? And so if I have something times something, I can cancel if whatever's up here is exactly the same as what's down there. So I can actually cancel this entire thing out with this. When you cancel those, what's left on top? Now, anything divided by itself is, is 1, isn't it? So on the top, really, there's just like a 1. What's on the bottom still? Negative 1. What's 1 over negative 1? Negative 1. Your answer is negative 1 here. It's kind of strange, isn't it? <clears throat> All that for less than nothing. This is just an exercise in factoring the negative 1 out. It's just to get you comfortable with it. Are you ready? Here it comes. Negative 10, x cubed, y squared, plus 55, x squared, y squared, minus 75, x, y squared. Do you all see what I'm holding in my right hand here? This is the book, so don't think I'm just like trying to make up problems just to like punish you, okay? These are problems taken directly out of the book. You can blame McKenna and Kirk. The authors of this book teach at uh, at one of the Alamo colleges. I forget which one it is. Here, oh. McKenna is at SAC and Kirk is at Palo Alto. So if you have issues with these problems, you go take it, you go visit them. That's pretty ugly looking, isn't it? You can't just start canceling things out here. So your only option is to to turn to your trusted knowledge base of factoring, right? What do you know about factoring? So let's look at the top. GCF. You see a 5 in all those, right? Would you like to pull a 5 or a negative 5? You want 5? Any reason why? You don't like pulling negatives or what? Why not? Your first term is negative, right? Didn't we say when we pull GCFs, our common technique is to try and make that first term positive by pulling a negative out? Okay, I'm not going to pull negative because that's not your instinct. I'll pull the positive, but later on you're going to wish we would have pulled the negative, and we will pull it. But just let's just pull the five. No, I'm not going to pull the negative yet. Okay, and then what else is a GCF? You have at, at least one x in each one, and then y squared. Okay, when we do that, we need to have parentheses and enough space for how many terms? Three, right? Because there were three terms in the top. One, two, three. So I need enough space for three. Let's try and figure out what we multiply 5xy squared by to get negative 10x cubed y squared. So what do we need? Negative 2x squared. Okay. How do we get a 55 out of 5? 11. So positive 11. 
X is the only thing missing there. How do we get a 75 from a negative 75 from 5? What do we have? 15. So negative 15. And anything else? We already have the X. We already have the Y squared. So that's it, right? What's left inside there? Three terms, right? And you're going to want to do that with AC method. But see, you have a negative two. That's okay. You can do it, but it's, it might cause you problems. I'm just going to stick with this, all right? I'm going to go down with the ship. I'm not going to be like that one guy on that ferry, right? I'm going to go down with the ship if that's what it takes. What about the bottom? Grouping, good. Why? Four terms, right? Four terms, grouping. So we didn't have a GCF here, right, on the bottom? No GCF. Grouping, because there's four terms. So I slash it right past the second term. I'll just do it right there. What comes out of the first two? Three. What's left? Seven plus 2y, right? We need that to match over here. Seven plus 2y. So what needs to be factored out? of this, or what do I need to multiply 7 by to get back negative 7x? Negative 1x. And now if we multiply negative 1x through, we get negative 7x. We multiply negative x times 2y, we get negative 2xy. Okay, I'm happy with this. This may work out. So yes, I am rewriting the whole problem, even if my hand is starting to cramp up or something, I'm just going to push through the pain. If you feel like you're wasting paper, don't worry about it, right? There's plenty of paper. 3x minus 7. Okay, there it is. All right, that's what the grouping turns into on the bottom. Now, we still need what? The three-term one up on top needs the AC method. Yep. And what are, what are the numbers I'm going to use? 30 and 11, right? What is it? 5 and 6. 5 times 6, 30. 5 plus 6, 11. So let me do that down here. I have to take the two end pieces, negative 2x squared, bless you, minus 15. And then in the middle, what do I write? Plus 5x plus 6x, right? Split that down the center with the grouping again. What can factor out of the first two terms? An x? What's left? Negative 2x. What is it? Plus 5. What comes out of it? Well, I need to match it, right? Negative 2x plus 5. So what needs to be out in front of that? Negative 3. Because to get a 6x from a negative 2x, I need to multiply by negative 3. To get a negative 15 from a 5, I need to multiply by negative 3. I'm at the end of my page here. Doesn't this turn into um, negative 2x plus 5 and then x minus 3? And that's just going to replace that piece up there, right? I wasn't kidding, right, when I said you're going to be more factoring? All right, I'm going to rewrite everything on the next page. We have 5xy squared in parentheses. It was what? Negative 2 plus 5 and then x minus 3. And then we have what on the bottom? 7 plus 2y, and then 
3 minus x. <sighs> it's exactly what we're going to do. Good. Does anything here look like it can cancel? How about this 2x, negative 2x plus 5? I don't see anything that looks like that down here, right? This out here, 5xy squared, I don't see any 5s and any x's by themselves or y's by themselves. The x minus 3, 3 minus x, hey, wait a minute, hold on. The x's are off by a sign. The 3's are off by a sign, which means I will pull a negative 1 out. Now, if we had done that in the very beginning, we wouldn't be dealing with this issue, but it's okay, right? As long as you see it now, that's all right. So let me pull a negative one out. Now, where do I put that negative one? I can put it anywhere. So I'm put it all the way out in front of the negative five, or in front of the five. I'm just going to make this a negative five x y squared negative two x plus five. When I pull the negative out, it turns into that last one turns into a what? Negative x plus three, and then on the bottom. 7 plus 2y, and then 3 minus x. And they match now, right? Does it matter that they're not in the same order? It doesn't, right? You could have. Yeah. These are great questions. Let me try and explain it, all right? It's a little bit, well, I'm glad you're asking this. Let's just take, let's just take some numbers. 5 times 3 times 2 times negative 1 times 6 times 7. Let's just say I have a bunch of numbers multiplied together, right? Or you know what? Let's do it this way. Let's make that... Um, uh, negative 6 and 7. Okay, what is, there's multiplication between all that, right? Multiplication between all of them, because I have dots there. Now that negative 6 is the only negative in the whole problem, isn't it? And it's going to make this whole answer negative, isn't it? But does it matter? If I took that negative away and put it on this 7 instead, would it give us the same answer? Yes, right? It's still going to be a number, right? and it's still going to be negative because I have one negative in the problem. If I took that negative and I put it on the 2 here instead, would that be the same answer? Yes. Can I take that negative and I put it on the 3? Yes, right? That negative is like a negative 1 that I can slide around and I can put it in front of any of those numbers, right? What you don't do is take that negative that's in front of the 6. You don't take that negative and put it on each one because if you put it on each one, now your answer is going to turn out to be positive, isn't it? Right? Negative times negative times negative times positive times negative. If you put the negatives all together, you get a positive. So when you have negative ones in, and you're looking at negative ones through multiplication, the negative one can slide around to one of the factors. It doesn't go to all of them. It just goes to one of them. So that's what I did here. I took a negative one out right here. I popped a negative one out, and then I had the choice of putting it on this one, this one, this one, or this one. I decided to put it on the 5 and turn the 5 into a negative 5. Does that help, or do you believe that now? Do you mean just like stuck it right there next to it? You could have, but it's just, I guess if you ever check the answer in the back of the book, they're never going to leave a negative 1 in parentheses by itself. They're always going to put that negative 1 out front, and you should be comfortable putting it out front also. And the book may have pulled the negative off the bottom, right? Because I could have done the same thing but pulled the negative off the bottom, and it would have put the negative out in front of, of this guy right here instead, right? It would have been down here. Well, that's a pretty big negative, but yes, that's what would have happened. Okay, these cancel, right? Nothing else cancels. So my answer is everything that's left here.
Okay. <clears throat> the uh, we're not done for the day, so don't get too excited. The homework that I'd like for you to do for this section is right here. If you have trouble with any of this, go back, watch the video. You can watch the video from my other class. I did different examples in my other class. Okay, so th what's that? What do you mean, no videos? Yeah, there should be 19 videos. You have to go to the YouTube. Hmm? A lot of that would have to do with your browser, I think, or your internet connection speed, or YouTube. I'll check it. I'll check it. I, I believe you. Did anyone else have that problem? You had this problem on, on the last videos? Yeah. Or you could just, you know, lower the dose of whatever. You've seen tracers and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just ease up, ease up on you know whatever you're doing. Don't don't come home on a Friday night and start watching videos. Um. <laughs> okay, so everyone got that? Yes. All right. Seven point two. All right. When when you go back and you think about, I'll tell you what this is called in a second. But I, I want you to think about when you first learned about fractions, right? Like we just did a fraction a second ago. If I gave you fifteen divided by twenty, we were asked to simplify it. You would, you know, three over four, right? Well, after you learned about fractions and what they meant how to simplify, then you were taught the operations with fractions, which are the operations with fractions are addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, right? How do you add fractions? How do you subtract fractions? How do you multiply fractions? How do you divide fractions? Right? Yeah, so it, which of those is the easiest to do? Adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing fractions? Multiplying, right? Because how do you multiply fractions? Straight across. We love it, right? It's the, great, it's the greatest operation there is for fractions. Division's a little bit trickier because you have to flip one of them. Addition, subtraction requires common denominator. So what we're going to do now is look at how do we do addition, subtraction, multiplication, division on these rational expressions. And we are going to start with multiplication because it is the easiest. That's what we'll do today. And then we'll come back and we'll do division, addition, subtraction. So um, this section is about multiplying and dividing rational expressions. So just remember that if you have two fractions, A over B times C over D, that you just do A times C divided by B times D. Just straight across, right? Straight across multiplication. So let's look at our first example. How about 6x cubed over x minus 5 times x plus 5 over 12x squared?
Does everyone see we have two fractions? Two rational expressions, and we are multiplying them because there's a dot between them. So let's look at the first, first one here. I can't factor 6x cubed. I mean, 6x x cubed is 6x cubed. x minus 5 can't be factored. x plus 5 can't be factored. X squared, uh, 12x squared cannot be factored. Everything is by itself. There's nothing I can do. But now let's try and multiply straight across. So that means I'm going to have the 6x cubed times, in parentheses, x plus 5, and then over x minus 5 times 12x squared. Do you notice my use of parentheses here? I did 6x cubed times this. That means the 6x cubed is times the entire numerator of the second rational expression. And then on the bottom, the x minus 5, I put that in parentheses times the 12x squared from the other one. Does anything cancel out? How about the x plus 5 and the x minus 5? Can I factor a negative 1 out and get those to cancel? Yeah, what did I say has to happen? They both have to be off by a sign, right? So I would need x. See, right now I have x and I have x. They are not off by a sign. The 5 and the negative 5 are off, but the x and the x aren't. So if they're not off by a sign, it won't happen. Just think about it for a second this way. Somebody, help me out pull a negative out of this one. What would happen if you pull a negative out? Negative, and you'd be left with what? Negative x minus 5, right? Because it would change both these positives to negatives, right? Now that you've pulled a negative out, does that match the one down here? No, because you have a negative x now, don't you? The, the 5s match, but the, the x's don't. So the only way to pull a negative and get them to cancel is if they were everything in the parentheses on both top and bottom or off by a sign. Okay, so I can't cancel those. How about the 6 and the 12? Well, 6 goes into 6 one time, 12 goes, 6 goes into 12 two times. How about x cubed divided by x squared? That's just an x left on top, isn't it? Now, why am I allowed to do all that? Why can I do all that 6 and 12? And What's the operation between everything? Multiplication. That's why I'm allowed to do this. The only addition symbols I have are inside these parentheses. Outside the parentheses is multiplication, multiplication, multiplication. So that's why the canceling can occur. So what's left on top? I have an x and x plus 5. On the bottom, what's left? I have x minus 5 into 2, right? So I'm going to put the 2 in front of it. Box it up. We're done. I think this, this next one is going to be our last example of the day. And I've saved the best for last. You ready? a squared minus 9b squared over 2a squared minus 5ab minus 3b squared times 4a squared plus 4ab plus b squared all of this divided by 2a squared plus 5ab minus 3b squared. What's that? Yeah. It's McKenna Kirk. I already told you it's not me.
What do you think? Yeah, but nothing can cancel, right? Because it's all addition and subtraction between things. Okay, so are you starting to see this as being like four separate problems? Are you just looking at it as just one big headache? There's four different problems, right? The first top left yellow one is the difference of squares. The blue one, three terms, AC method. The pinkish one is three terms, AC method. The green one is three terms, AC method. So you've got one difference of squares and three AC methods in one problem here. Now, because time is an issue, and I want to give you a problem to try yourself, let me help you here. The difference of squares on that will be a plus 3b, a minus 3b. Do you believe that? Okay. The bottom left, if you do a little bit of your AC method and make your little x over there. Well, you know what? Let's do this one. I'll do this one. You would have what? Negative 6 and negative 5, and then use what? 1 in negative 6. So you put the two ends on this, right? 2a squared and then minus 3b squared. What goes in the middle? Plus 1ab. That's you got to be real important. It's real important here that you recognize that when you're doing that, that ab in the middle, right? That's That determines the variable that you use in the middle here. So we have 1ab plus what? Or minus, sorry, 6ab. Then you do your split and you do your group. So A comes out, 2A plus B. The other one has to be 2A plus B. And so I pull a negative 3 out of that. No, negative 3B. So that gives me 2A plus B times A minus 3B. That all right? Okay, so I'm going to put that below here. 2a plus b and a minus 3b. Then I have times. Times. Okay, that top one, let's see here. I think it's going to be 2a plus b. 2a plus b again. That's 4, that's 2, that's 2, that's... Okay, that's it right there. Now, you realize that that would require another, you know, breakdown, grouping, and all that, unless you can do it mentally. And then this one will be 2a, let's see, b, a, 3b, Minus, plus, one of these is minus, one of them plus. So plus and minus right here like that. I believe that's it. Hold on. 2a squared plus 6 minus, minus. Yeah? Okay? So I left a lot of work out there, right? Let's see. Because this is multiplication, because that's multiplication here, I could just view, view this as being just one big division bar and then just start canceling stuff out. Because multiplication, you just wind up putting them all together anyway, right? Okay, so let's just start canceling things that match. They have to match exactly. A Well, the A minus 3B, oh, I didn't even see that one. A plus 3B goes away over here. 2A plus B, 2A plus B. You could have done either one, but only one. Only one. One has to stay. And how about these? Are those off by a sign? No, the two A's are the same, right? So I can't do a negative one cancel on that. So I'm pretty much there. 2A plus B over 2A minus B. Yes. 
Yeah, you're, you, it's, it's perfectly fine to get a headache. This is really, I mean, when you talk about algebra, this is, this is algebra. This is mechanical algebra, manipulation of things like this. And, you know, this is what students who are, like, good at calculus and things like that are really good at this stuff because you have to be good at this to be able to do the calculus. It's kind of built in. But it takes time. You know, you have to build up to it. Here's the assignment for um, next time. Off that page right there, page 468. And then this problem right here, I want this to be a take-home. I don't have time for it today. I want this to be a take-home uh, problem. Two, well, it's out of two different sections, yes. It's quite a bit of work. Because remember, each of these problems right here, there's only four. Each of them is probably going to be four factoring problems like the one we just did. So you're talking about 16 factorings just here. See how you do. The blue one, I was going to give that to you in class. How about we do this? Do that, turn it in next time, um, and we'll let it be a quiz grade to replace your lowest. Okay, so it's an optional problem, but you need to at least do your homework, all right? Yes, that blue problem will replace your lowest quiz grade. Okay? Um, anything else? I'm going to check on that video right now to see if uh, you're lying to me or not.